16-year-old knows that adulthood is not far away, so they will start to show more independence and engage in less conflict with their parents. They also will begin making decisions with that independence in mind. However, their choices may not always feel like the right ones to their parents. By age 16, most teens are starting to think in abstract ways. They can deal with several concepts at the same time and imagine the future consequences of their actions. This type of thinking continues to develop into adulthood. Also by age 16, teens can learn to process more complex problems and to develop and test theories. They are better able to handle a more demanding high school curriculum as their memory and organizational skills improve. These skills include time management, test preparation, and study skills. Written and spoken language become more and more sophisticated. They may also start to grasp political, moral, social, and philosophical concepts. Most teens want to do the right thing but their thoughts and behaviors may sway them to act with little thought about the end result. The teenage brain has not reached full development, and their choices can be different than what is expected by adults. Teens understand that others have differing viewpoints, but they often firmly believe their own perception is the most true or valid. This is normal, but can be hard for parents. Even though teens are forming adult cognitive abilities, they still don't have the life experiences or the brain maturity to guide them in making the best choices. Roseanne Keen made the wrong choice. 16-year-old Roseanne Keen poisoned her owner Eno Seely. Young Keen reportedly used arsenic borrowed from a neighbor that she mixed with butter and served to Seely. Roseanne Keen was a slave working for her master, for reasons best known to Roseanne, she decided to use arsenic. In addition to its presence as a poison, for centuries arsenic was used medicinally. It has been used for over 2,400 years as a part of traditional Chinese medicine. In the Western world, arsenic compounds, such as salvarsin, were used extensively to treat syphilis before penicillin was introduced. It was eventually replaced as a therapeutic agent by sulfid drugs and then by other antibiotics. Arsenic was also an ingredient in many tonics. In addition, during the Elizabethan era, some women used a mixture of vinegar, chalk, and arsenic applied topically to whiten their skin. This use of arsenic was intended to prevent aging and creasing of the skin, but some arsenic was inevitably absorbed into the bloodstream. During the Victorian era in the United States, U.S. newspapers advertised arsenic complexion wafers that promised to remove facial blemishes such as moles and pimples. Some pigments, most notably the popular emerald green, were based on arsenic compounds. Overexposure to these pigments was a frequent cause of accidental poisoning of artists and craftsmen. Arsenic became a favored method for murder of the Middle Ages and Renaissance, particularly among ruling classes in Italy allegedly. Because the symptoms are similar to those of cholera, which was common at the time, arsenic poisoning often went undetected. By the 19th century, it had acquired the nickname Inheritance Powder, perhaps because impatient heirs were known or suspected to use it to ensure or accelerate their inheritances. It was also a common murder technique in the 19th century in domestic violence situations, such as the case of Rebecca Copin, who attempted to poison her husband by putting arsenic in his coffee. Arsenic may be measured in blood or urine to monitor excessive environmental or occupational exposure, confirm a diagnosis of poisoning in hospitalized victims or to assist in the forensic investigation in a case of fatal overdosage. 
Some analytical techniques are capable of distinguishing organic from inorganic forms of the element. Organic arsenic compounds tend to be eliminated in the urine in unchanged form, while inorganic forms are largely converted to organic arsenic compounds in the body prior to urinary excretion. The current biological exposure index for U.S. workers of total urinary arsenic may easily be exceeded by a healthy person eating a seafood meal. Tests are available to diagnose poisoning by measuring arsenic in blood, urine, hair, and fingernails. The urine test is the most reliable test for arsenic exposure within the last few days. Urine testing needs to be done within 24 to 48 hours for an accurate analysis of an acute exposure. Tests on hair and fingernails can measure exposure to high levels of arsenic over the past 6 to 12 months. These tests can determine if one has been exposed to above average levels of arsenic. They cannot predict, however, whether the arsenic levels in the body will affect health. Chronic arsenic exposure can remain in the body systems for a longer period of time than a shorter term or more isolated exposure and can be detected in a longer time frame after the introduction of the arsenic, important in trying to determine the source of the exposure. New Jersey was known as the slave state of the North in 1800. There were about 12,000 slaves in the state. By 1830, New Jersey was home to more than two-thirds of the entire slave population of the North. Bergen County was the state slaveholding center. Scholars estimate that by the late 1700s, enslaved people made up about 20% of Bergen's population and 40% of its labor force. Its economy thrived thanks to the unpaid black laborers who worked its plantations small farms, urban workshops, mines and especially its ports. New Jersey slaveholders didn't give up this bounty lightly. The state was the last in the North to outlaw slavery. Even when legislation was finally passed in 1804, freed slaves were required to serve lengthy apprenticeships, which weren't much different from slavery according to the Princeton and Slavery Project. The last 16 enslaved people in New Jersey were not freed until 1866, when the state reluctantly ratified the 13th Amendment. Roseanne Keene, born into slavery in New Jersey, was hanged for poisoning her owner Enno Seeley. Young Keene reportedly used arsenic borrowed from a neighbor that she mixed with butter and served to Seeley. He succumbed to the poison but authorities believed Seeley died of natural causes. It was only when a neighbor revealed that she had given the poison to young Keen that suspicions escalated and officials exhumed Seeley's body. A laboratory analysis confirmed Seeley had died from arsenic poisoning, and officials tried, convicted, and sentenced Keen to death for the murder. Local authorities hanged Keene in a jail yard in April 1844 L. Tough she was reportedly deficient in intellect. Roseanne Keene was publicly executed by hanging in New Jersey on April 26, 1844. She was just 16 years old. Thank you for watching Death Row.